morning grace and peace praise the lord everyone praise the lord everyone the word of god says in psalm 107 verse 1 and 2 oh give thanks to the lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever let the redeem of the lord say so we have come today to give thanks unto the god who is always good god is good all the time and all the time, God is good. In every circumstance in your life, God has always been good. You will leave from here with a deeper revelation of his goodness. In this service, you will experience his faithfulness to you. In this service, you will experience his love for you. In this service, you will experience how he has blessed you. In this service, you will experience how he has empowered you. In this service, you will experience how he has delivered you. In this service, you will experience how he has encouraged you. In this service, you will experience how he has shielded you. In this service, you will experience how he has anointed you. In this service, you will receive a revelation of Jesus to Christ. Let's celebrate this great God, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. How great is our God.
Love Ministry, let's prepare to declare our decree for the decade of pay. Decrees are available in our chat box. You may remain on mute as you repeat after me. This is our decade of pay and we can have what we say. Therefore, we decree that 5784 is our year to advance. It is our year. My family is saved. It is our year of overflow. It is our year of victory. It is our year of big moves and surprises. It is our year of increase and wealth. It is our year to live financially giant. It is our year of overcome all limitations. It is our year to walk through great and precious doors. It is our year to walk in accurate discernment. It is our year to possess my possessions. It is our year to occupy my rightful place of promising. This is our year of noble miracles. How many really believe these decrees? If you really believe them, let's seal them with. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Is it possible that we can just give God a praise? Everybody, Elder Marbley, everybody's putting it in the chat. Awesome job, Elder Marbley. It's coming in the chat left and right in case you can't see it. It's coming in the chat. Everyone is giving God praise for what a wonderful job you did this morning. We are so godly proud of you. We thank God that you were willing to step out of your comfort zone and step <laughs> into a new zone with him. And that's one of the things we're releasing today, a new realm in the spirit. And yes, I see you, Prophet Arms. So you prophesied it in prayer. Oh, I've been listening to what's going on in prayer, honey to see who tuned in to what God is saying. Hallelujah. Are we going in a realm today? And everybody on here today, you will not be able to come out. The only reason you won't go in is if you don't want to go in. Because it's already been prophesied. It's been set aside. It's the word of God. And it is for today. But overseer, is it possible that we can put up Demi and True's picture? Can we spotlight them just for a minute, the McDay girls? This is our first time having them in one of our services. They're in Florida. We have prayed for these girls, born with different things, heart and different things. And they are on with us today. I saw them in the gallery. If we can spotlight them so everybody can see them. I can can't spotlight because the camera's not on. Oh, I got you. Okay. Well, Deacon McDade's grandchildren are on today. Their family in Florida is on. Bless the Lord. Demi and True's picture was up there. Bless the Lord. So you could see the girls. And we certainly thank God. Two little miracle babies that God's hand is upon and God's hand has been upon. And just when I saw them, come up. I saw their beautiful mom standing outside the car and I said, oh my God, maybe we'll get to see the girls. And the next thing I knew, the picture came up with the girls. And and so I was so thankful to see that. Um, did everybody see them when they were in the gallery? Okay. Can you show the whole gallery again and unspot like me so you can just see their pit? There they are down there in the lower right hand corner. You see the two little darlings? You see, just see them, they're in Florida and this is their first time able to worship with us by this way. 
uh, of Zoom, and we're just glad to see them, glad to see how God's hand is upon them, how God is blessing the family, how the girls are walking in divine health, how mom and dad are getting stronger and stronger in the Lord, how the prayers of the righteous are availing much and making great intercession and things happen in the spirit. And we give God praise. Deacon McDay, there's your girls. I know you've seen them recently, but we rejoice. We rejoice <laughs> with you. We thank God for them and for you. And oh my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, it's so good to be in your presence. It's so wonderful to know we're in the right place at the right time with the word that you have ordained for this particular day. God, I sit in awe because you know how I wrestle with this word for today. And you know what you are going to do and what you have already done, not only in my life as the presenter, but in the lives of your people as we hear from you. We thank you as has already been established in pre-service prayer. This word goes forth unhindered by any outside force. It is received in the hearts of your people. And as realms are open for us, we walk in now knowing who we are in you. And you bring us in by the spirit. And we give you praise with much thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Who bless the Lord. Hallelujah. There's something happens when we call your name. 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 Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. If you're not even with your Bible, I know you have your Bible, but the scriptures I'm using today are in your chat. So you can pull them right out of the chat for you. And let me just say to the team that, that this team, that, um, let's, let's, let's mute everybody except me. If you're not muted, mute yourself, please. Hallelujah for the team that helped put this together today for us. And uh, uh, those of you who worked to make it all happen. No nothing just happens, folks. People work to make it happen. People rearrange themselves, their schedules, their what they're doing to make it all happen. And nobody does it by themselves. Everybody needs help to get it done. And it's really the way God has set it up. He set it up so that we would be covenant people uh, dependent, interdependent on each other. And so there are no long rangers and there, there are no super, superhuman people. We're just all supernatural people in the kingdom of God. And we're placed as it has pleased him to give him all the honor and to give him all the glory. And today was such a demonstration, Elder Marvin, I'm still, I'm still rejoicing over you. Uh, you were, you, the people who see this will not realize how much out of your comfort zone you stepped and how willing you were to be out of your comfort zone so that God could use you. And that's a demonstration of even what I'm releasing, the new realms that God is opening for us. You can't take your old mindset into a new realm. It will trip you up, block you up, and slam the door in your face. So the, the biggest hindrance that we have had as people is our mind and time. Stay with me, folks, because we're going somewhere. 
our mind, and our time. And after the day, you're going to serve your mind and time. Notice that they no longer rule you. You rule them. Hallelujah. My mind will no longer rule me. My spirit will take over. Hallelujah. And time will come into its place and realize that I control you. <laughs> and you have no rulership over me. Mind and time have been enemies of the state. <laughs> and now we've taken our rightful place back. And you take it, you know, you take your place back step by step. And minute by minute by minute, and in every area of our life, go to Ephesians chapter 2. Well, let it, if you would start reading for me, hallelujah. For by grace, stop right you. there, right there. Grace, that word grace, everybody underline that word. I'm gonna be doing that a lot to you, baby. So it's, it's by grace, grace. If you're writing down definitions, grace means it's already done. See, we put too much effort in trying to do what's already done. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. We, we apply too much effort trying to make something happen that's already done. For by grace, all we really have to do is receive it. And what happens is when it doesn't, appear that it happens physically or we can't see it physically we worry about it and then we try to make it show up i'm taking my time we worry and try to make it show up instead of learning how to receive grace means it's already done and today we're moving into a realm of living beyond time and our mind. Grace, that word grace includes favor. It includes the cross. It includes what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And it includes where we should be because of what he did on the cross. Whole lot of grace. So when we say for by grace, we're saying, for by what Jesus did, for by the favor of God being on my life, for by the finished work of the cross. Keep reading. Are ye saved through faith? Through faith. Did you see that? Grace through faith. In other words, it's already done, but it won't be delivered to me without faith. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's already done, but I can't get it without faith. Well, let, me, let me break that down for you for a minute. You could not accept Jesus Christ without faith in the fact that he was born of a virgin. He died on the cross for you. He rose from the dead that he ascended up on high is now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. And when you confess that by faith, don't tell me you didn't confess it by faith because you did, because even though you were there when it happened, you wasn't there when it happened. Don't shout me down. We were there. The Bible says we were there. I was crucified with Christ. Let no longer do I live, but Christ now lives in me. But guess what? I wasn't there because I wasn't even born yet. So I had to believe it and receive it by faith. I couldn't believe it because I saw it because I wasn't at Calvary, but I was at Calvary. So don't take this out of context and don't take this little snippet right here and make this say something that I'm not saying. I was there when you crucified my Lord. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. I was there, but yet I wasn't there. But by faith, I was there. By faith, I was there. And when you accepted Jesus Christ 
as your Lord by faith because you didn't see it. You didn't cause it to happen. There's not one time that you saw one drop of blood, but yet you can't beat. I couldn't beat it out of you that he didn't shed his blood for you. I couldn't make you believe that he didn't shed his blood for you. How do you believe it? You believe it by faith. You know, because you know, because you know by faith. And you also know by faith, there is absolutely nothing you did to make it happen. All you did was receive it. Oh my God, receive it. It's already done. Keep reading, baby. Read it, read it all now. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Oh, not of myself. That means I can stop trying to make it work. I don't have to make my salvation work. But I have to receive my salvation for it to work. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm looking at you, Chardette. Chardette, to put her pen down. She said, I can't write now. I got to listen to this one. I, I, I had to go back and get this. One. I had to get my notes on the go round. See, she's sort of like me. I'm like that. When when I, I oh wait a minute, I I, I just want to get this. I'm so glad I know it's been recorded because uh yeah I'm I'm going back to get this one because I it's something I need to get right here. And not of yourselves. So can I can in this new realm, you got to stop trying to make everything happen, but you got to receive what's already happened. If you take a note, you need to write down it's already done but it cannot be delivered to me without faith. Hallelujah. You need to write down, faith causes grace to function in my life. Faith causes grace to function in my life. Grace does not function automatically. Woo! I know your mind gonna beat me up on that one, don't matter. Because greater is he that's on the inside of me. Your mind going to come in line with the spirit today. Grace does not function automatically. Favor. The favor of God is already ours. It's yours. But you have to activate that favor by faith. It is not of yourself. Stop trying to make it happen. It's a gift. What happens with gifts? Today is Sharina's birthday. Mike is giving her lots of gifts. What is she going to do with the gifts? She's going to receive them. Yesterday was Jacob's birthday. Or one day this week. He had, I seem like it been going on all week. And I know what. Uh, the party was yesterday. It seemed like every day been his birthday. Hallelujah. He got all them gifts. What did he have to do? He has had to receive the gifts. He has to open the gifts. He has to experience the gifts. You have to open the gift, getting acquainted with God. You have to get to know what he's done for you. You can't receive the gift of eternal life if you don't understand what happened at Calvary. And if you don't understand what that happening has made available for us in our life, then all we know is I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be going to heaven, but I'm going to live in heaven on earth. Somebody better come on with me. I'm going to have heaven right here and heaven up there. Another realm of heaven up there, but there's a realm of heaven for me to have right here. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. It's a gift. Preacher, what you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you. That in this gift, every deliverance you'll ever need is already been provided. In this gift, every request you'll ever need is already been provided. In this gift, everything you'll ever need, it, need has already been provided. It's already been provided. In my grace place. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Ooh, I like that grace place in my grace place. I got a grace place where every need is provided. Every deliverance is provided. Everything I need to let go of, that door is shut. Everything I need to open, mm -mm, that door is shut. Hallelujah. Go to Galatians 2.20. Hallelujah. Start reading, baby. Can she read? Not sure what happened, but I'll start at Galatians 2.20. Thank you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, keep going. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Stop there. Stop right there. You need to touch yourself and say, it's not me living. It's Christ living in me. Thank you, overseer. So you got to have people that's Johnny on the spot. Whatever technical difficulty come up, they got it. They keep it, keep it moving. We know she has them. She did them for me. Hallelujah. It's not me living. New mindset. It's not me living. What, what is the Bible? Am I in the Bible? If I'm if I'm not in the Bible, y'all sign off right now. Just go on and sign off. <laughs> sign off. It says, I am crucified with Christ nevertheless. Didn't we just talk about that? That I was crucified with him, but I wasn't there, but I was there. <laughs> I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. Keep reading, overseer. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. By, by what? Is that faith again? Is that word faith again? So I'm living this life or he's living this life through me because I have faith that he now lives on the inside of me. Is that is that right? And keep reading. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, but guess what? Verse 21, that's where we're going. <laughs> let, me, let me stop right there. I live by faith. I have to have faith in the fact that God loves me. I have to have faith that he sent his son to die for me. I have to have faith now that his son lives on the inside of me. I don't want to lose you. That's why I'm taking it step by step. I, I'm born again, so I have faith that he now lives on the inside of me. So it's not me trying to live my life. It's me allowing him to live his life through me. Uh, mm, that, that's what the Bible says. See, we just read before, stop trying to do it yourself and just receive the gift on the inside of you and let the gift work from the inside out. Mm, but then go to verse 21. Because here, here's where we're going to camp for a minute. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Oh, stop right there. I do not frustrate the grace of God. That means that I can frustrate the grace of God. How do I frustrate the grace of God? By living in my mind and living in my time. Wow, I like that, hon. I like wow. I like wow. Hallelujah. I frustrate. See, if it doesn't look like my body's healed, but God says my body's healed, and I choose to go with what it looks like rather than what he says, I frustrate the finished work. Am I making sense to you now? Mm-hmm. If, 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 if he said, I'm out of debt, and I keep calling myself in there, I frustrate the finished work. If he said, I'm never alone, 
And I keep talking about how lonely I am. I frustrate the finished work. And verse 21 says, I will not frustrate the grace of God. It doesn't look like it in my finances, but everything I say talks about what it looks like, my mind and time, rather than and my mind and time makes me think the word is not working. And because I think I think the word needs more time to work. Yep, don't don't shout me down because we all been there. We we all been there. Uh, Lord, I, 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 Lord, you'll have it done by next week. No, no, Lord, I know, I know if I just give you a little more time. Don't, don't, don't shout me down. See, because time says the word is not working because if the word was working, it'd be done by now. And yet the truth is you just need to praise him for who he is, not for what you see. Because you got it by faith. I wrote down here, we spent all our life putting God in the place of time or time in the place of God. That's a shout right there. That's a hallelujah. That's a praise the Lord. That's a forgive me, Lord. If it didn't happen in a certain amount of time, we thought God didn't do it or he couldn't do it or that his word didn't work or he just... Mm. We put God in the place of time. Or we put time in the place of God. Mm. No, 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 no. We put God right back now where he belongs. And time works for me. And I talk to time. See, it didn't happen last week. Well, you just keep believing. It didn't happen. Last week. Well, you just keep believing. We, I'm going to give you a testimony. Uh, we had a member of our church uh, who had an eviction notice. You, you have no way of knowing who this is. And they had an eviction notice and they were going to be evicted on the 16th of October. And they prayed and they started packing and they tried to start packing. And the Lord told them, don't pack. So they sent it into the church. Could the church help? Was there anything we could do? And blah, blah, blah. So we we couldn't we were the conditions were not met for the church to be of assistance there are certain conditions and they the lord said no i said well lord can I, can i do it he said no you can't do it and i said what do i do and he said you believe with what they believe i've said to them so i called them and i said what has the lord spoken to you and he, they said, the Lord told me I can't pack. And Bishop, I keep trying to pack. I went and got boxes. I keep trying to pack. I'm not trying to have nobody put my children and I out of here. And da -da. I, I don't know what to do. I said, all you're going to do? I said, are you sure you heard from God? Yes, I heard from God. And I said, okay, then you've heard from God. And I stand in agreement with you that what God spoke to you was the word of the Lord. I said, first of all, I already know you and your children will not be put on the street. That's not happening. Uh, how he's going to bring you out, I have no idea. But if he told you not to pack, you're not to pack. So we go on and we go on and the 16th comes. And so at noon on the 16th, I called and said, is there any update? Two o'clock, I get an email. Bishop, the email's in all caps. They go to court to be evicted. The people that's supposed to evict them don't show up. The judge throws the whole thing out. So it's just like it never happened. They only needed a certain amount of time to come up with the $3,000 that they were short. Hallelujah, what just happened here? They needed a certain amount of time to come up with the $3,000 that they were short. Now that the judge threw it out, they have the time they need. 
to come up. And they already had a plan. They had asked the people, would they delay the time? The people wouldn't delay the time. I'm sitting up here studying that time is not going to rule us. Is anybody listening to me? All we knew was God said, don't pack. Now they don't have to pack. They have the time because the whole thing was thrown out. So it's just like it never happened. And within the time frame that is left, they will have the money that they needed so that it will be paid. Somebody better hear me. God knows what he's saying. When he says it's already finished, it's already finished. But it will take faith for you to sit there and go in before the judge and say, judge, and the judge said, they didn't show up. I'm throwing it out. It's just like it never happened. It's just like it never happened. It's just like it never happened. It's a finished work. It's a finished work, but you can frustrate the gift of God. You can frustrate the gift of God by, okay, the Lord told you not to pack. So you're going to keep packing and frustrate the gift of God. You're going to call everybody you know and try to raise $3,000. And he told you to be still. He giving you scriptures telling you to be still, but you're going to frustrate the gift of God. How are you going to frustrate it? Because you're going to try to make it happen yourself and you're going to try to make it happen in the time that circumstances say it has to happen because you won't be still and hear from God. Is anybody getting any help in here? You will frustrate the gift, the grace of God. You will frustrate what God is saying is anybody, hallelujah, getting any help. Every problem you have, I saw what you just put in there. Anybody experiencing problem, there's your answer right there. The grace of God already has your answer. But you have to be in tune with him. You have to know God speaks to you about your problem. God didn't speak to me about their problem. Are you listening to me? He did not speak to me about their problem. He said to me, agree with her for what I told her. Half the time you ask people that, they don't know what God said because their mind got 10,000 different things running through their mind, running through their mind, running through their mind, hallelujah, running through their mind. Just like when that lady called and said, I visited your church in May and now I got four bills paid. And she said, I'm on, I see me coming out of debt. She said, when I left there, you hadn't even taught on you hadn't even taught on debt free in 23. You hadn't even taught it. She said, but you told me, lay hands on my bills. You was telling people, lay hands on my bills. She said, now I got four paid for already and my income haven't changed. Can I give you a quick testimony? Just let me give you a quick one. Last month, the Lord told me to send uh, $500 to someone, uh, one of my bills. So I sent $500. I said, do I have five? I know I had $500 send them. I know I had $500. I know I had $500 send them. I sent them $500. Come to find out there was some rewards, you know, that you can pay on your card. By the time I put the rewards on the card and sent the $500, there was one more bill for me paid off. I didn't even know it was close to being paid off. You got to follow the Holy Ghost. He's telling you how to be debt free. But you know what? Your mind told you you're getting ready to get a million dollars and pay off all your bills. Your mind is a liar. I know you wasn't going to like me today, but you're going to get set free. Your mind is deceiving you. And your mind is making you think that God can't do what he said he can do because you won't come into the spirit realm and let him show you how to work it. Oh, Jesus, I got to sit down and teach this. 
And then every time your mind come up with a plan, your mind has a time limit on the plan. And then the time limit doesn't come to pass. And there you are frustrating the grace of God, disappointed again, not knowing what to do. And your mind is setting up a, a, a tree that God cannot do what he said he's going to do. God not only can do, he's already done what he said he's going to do. But we have to get in his zone instead of him. We trying to get him in our zone. We have to come into the spirit realm. I'm watching one bill, one bill, one bill. I looked at one the other day. And the interest rate was so high. He said, every time you get a piece of money, send them something. He didn't say what to send them. Send them something. Why? Because you're knocking down that interest. I'm taking you out of debt. I'm taking you out of debt. Your mind has it fixed one way. How about you let the Holy Spirit show you how it's supposed to be done? Do you think that woman thought that, that them people wasn't going to show up? After they put that notice on her door. After they sent people out there. Do you think that woman, her mind couldn't even see, conceive. Because I has not seen. Either has it entered into the heart, the mind of people. What God has in store or the way he has of bringing you out of the situation. But he reveals it to our spirit. And he doesn't reveal the whole plan to our spirit. Send them $500. I didn't even know they was up in the list to be paid off. Another one. Bites the door. Paid off. In the spirit. In the spirit. Not in the way your mind or my mind. And folks, I'm teaching this slow because let me tell you, I'm, I'm singing to me too. I'm walking through this. I told y'all when I started teaching this, I'm walking through this. Our mind makes us think it has to happen a certain way. Now stop for a minute with me. And then when it doesn't happen the way we perceived it was supposed to happen, we don't even think our mind tripped us up. We think God wasn't able to do it. What happened? The Lord didn't do it. Oh, all them prophecies about being debt free, they lying to me. I ain't going to be debt free. Oh, walking as a financial giant. Your mind has decided how it's going to happen. How about you receive the gift of God and let your spirit determine how it's going to happen? Somebody give God a praise. How about you just stop frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. I was listening to a, a book it's on audio. I, I, on, on, well, I'm not even going there. Just, just write it down. I'm going to stop frustrating the grace of God. I'm going to stop frustrating the grace of God. I'm going to stop frustrating the grace of God. And let me say this to you, because I got to move quickly now. Uh, let, let me say this to you. A few weeks ago, Apostle designated, designate Wallace preached. And she gave a prophetic word in her sermon. I was on. In pre-service prayer, Prophet Wanda Rowe gave a word very similar in pre-service prayer. I was on then too. I listened to both words. Then the Lord spoke something to me. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? Now, all this happened on a Sunday. By Tuesday, I was still saying, God, I, I keep hearing what they said. I hear what the prophetic words said. But what are you saying? You're saying something that I didn't hear in those words that both of them gave. 
And that sermon that I gave you on joy and breaking your financial thing came out of me sitting before the Lord saying, what are you saying? What he was saying was, I'm opening new realms for the people, but their mindset will keep them from going in because they perceive that it has to be one way and I'm doing it a completely new way. Yeah. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can everybody just unmute themselves for a minute and give God a praise? If, if you got hallelujah. If, if you don't have one, don't. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will no longer trust you. I will no longer trust you. The freeway cord is not easily broken. Yes. Say it one more time. I will no longer trust you. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, yeah. I need y'all to mute yourselves, yes, because they. I don't want them to mute me. Thank you, Jesus. I, I will no longer frustrate the grace of God. So now we're moving into this realm where we decree what's been decided. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ooh, you're in Hebrews now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody mute yourself except my readers. Thank you. We're decreeing what's already been decided. I'm not going back and pick up last week. That's why we're sending them all to you so you can study these words. Told you all along, you will not be able to get them. I have moved to a new place. I, I, I think everybody should know that by now. I, I'm totally apostolic in my teaching. To totally apostolic in my teaching. I'm preaching from a whole nother spectrum of authority. So if you, 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 you're going to have to get it. I, I'm getting it. I, I'm getting it while I'm teaching it. You're getting it while I'm teaching it. The, everybody you know in Christian now is not getting this. You know why? Because they're going by what they see. And you're going by what's been decided based on the word of God. You, every decree that you have, that I have you saying, and uh, Prophet Armstrong, you can probably tell me, I don't remember what month I taught decrees for five days or seven days. Every day at noon, I did decrees on the phone preparing us for, and I might as well tell you, November, the angels are showing up. And the angels are hearkening diligently unto the voice of the Lord. So I'm when we've been telling you to get your mouth cleaned up, We've been telling you, the angel, your help is on the way. The hoof prints are coming. <laughs> they coming, y'all. The, the hoof prints are coming. And they're coming for what you're saying, that you believe what you say. Some of you talking about, oh, never mind, I'm not going there. I don't have time to go there. Hallelujah. You have to know 
that what you're saying is already done. You have to be decreeing it from a place of a finished work in Christ. And yes, there is opposition to what you are trying to pull in. There's opposition to what you're trying to see because the enemy wants you to think that God can't do what he said he can do. And if you're based it on everything, on what you see and what you feel, oh, God can't heal you. That's why you still sit. No, we call ourselves healed when we hurt like a bad dog. I'm not healed because I don't hurt anymore. I'm healed because he said I'm healed. How I feel has to line up and come into your whole self. You have to get yourself to understand your checkbook. Your checkbook could have money in it. If you knew how to talk to it and you understood principles of money, there's some principles of money that I know I'm, I, I, I'm not teaching them right now. I, I'm teaching this, but there's some, I can tell you right now, there's principles of money that some of y'all don't understand. There's principles of money. And that's why money don't do what you tell it to do. <laughs> money will do what you tell it to do when you get yourself in line with the principles. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's some opposition to it. <laughs> you greater than the opposition. You greater than the flesh and the sense realm are trying to tell you that the spirit realm is not working. And the flesh in the sense realm is a liar. The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. Which means in the spirit realm, we will overtake facts and feelings. It didn't say we walk by facts. It said we walk by faith. It didn't say we walk by how we feel. It said we walk by faith. Go to Hebrews 11, 1. Hallelujah. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, my God. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The next verse is Hebrews eleven six. That don't take my stuff out of order. I, hallelujah. The next one is not three; it's six. Eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Oh 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 oh. Did you just say without faith it's impossible to please God? Is that what you said? So that means I can't activate grace without faith. And that means I'm saved by grace through faith. So everything that I get has to come by faith. That means I can't, I can't activate the grace of the finished work. The finished work. I can't activate that without faith in the finished work. Am I making sense to anybody? So I have to hold on to my evidence by faith. And what does it say? Go, go back to one, the B part. The evidence of things what? Not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence, if you're trying to see it, you don't need faith. Hallelujah. Once I see it, I don't need no faith. I don't need faith to know Elder Marbley and the Armsters and the Johnsons and Sherwin and Sister Robinson and the McDade's going to be on here today. I'm looking at them. They on my first screen. I go to my second screen. There's 20 some more people up on there. I don't need faith to say, Ooh, the, Lord, say, I don't have to say, Lord, send them. They already there. I'm, I can see them. And it's not AI. 
It, it, it's real I. I can see them. Now, the ones I'm calling in are the ones I can't see. I need faith for the thousands that I want to see it when it hit YouTube on Tuesday. I need faith for the ones I want to see it on Facebook when it hit Facebook next Tuesday. I need faith for them. I don't need faith for you. You right there. I'm looking at you. I need faith for what I can see. And I'm preaching to them just like they on here right now. Are you listening to me? Because the evidence of what I can't see. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Let me hurry up. You have to own it before it shows up physically. See, I've already owned them thousands of people that's going to see this on YouTube. I've been praying for them for weeks. I've been praying for them to get this word because this word is that important in their life. And how, how how have they been receiving it? They've been getting it by faith. I've been asking the angels to speak to the ones that's going to go to the YouTube channel and the first book channel to get it. Because I realize the importance of this particular word and how it connects with other words. So they're not just going to go to YouTube and get this word. They're going to go back and get some more. My evidence, I can't see it yet, but my faith is not diminished. Am I making sense to you? I have to own it physically. I have to own it before it shows up physically. I own it before it shows up physically. And grace is nothing but speaking the finished work of Christ. John 19, 30, when he said it is finished. When he said it's finished, I'm speaking the finished work. I'm speaking the finished work. I'm speaking the finished work. He read Hebrews eleven three. Somebody through, through faith, we understand that Stop the it. world. Stop right there. It says through faith we understand. That means without faith. We're not going to understand much. I hope you just got that. Your mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. Without faith, you are not going to understand. Through faith, we understand. Through faith, it talks about the worlds being formed. Were you there when the worlds were formed? No, you believe they were formed by faith. Have you seen all the worlds in the universe? Have you been out on Mars? You've been out on, no, no. You believe they're all out there by faith, don't you? Uh-huh. You haven't been to none of them. Any of you getting ready to take one of these trips for 10000 uh, for $100,000 out to one of the other in other planets? If you're getting ready to take it, I want to see your $10,000 offering before you go. See, I'm, I'm talking about financial principles. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd throw that one in there. Hallelujah. But you believe them planets are out there. You, I, I, you believe those planets are out there, but by faith, you believe they're out there. You believe it by faith. That means without faith, you don't have any understanding. You take a note, you need to write it down. My understanding is based on my level of faith. My understanding is based on my level of faith. Somebody's eyes are coming open right now. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. My understanding. Now it's time. All righty. Now it's time. For me to stand in my rightful blood-bought place in life. And faith and grace will take me there. Faith and grace will take me there. Faith and grace will take me there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
let me let me say this and I'm getting ready to close. I think I'm giving you about as much as you can take. Bless the Lord. And this was going to be a three part. It might be a four part because I'm just halfway to the halfway point in part one. Bless the Lord. Promises, blessings, and anointings are not automatic. Somebody just threw their hands up. What? Promises, blessings, and anointings are not automatic, but they are designed. Here's the way God gave it to me. He said, I've designed every promise to work for you when you get in the place to receive it. What? I've, I've designed every blessing to get to you when you get in the place to receive it. I've designed it that way. I have not designed, this was the word of the Lord to me. I did not design one blessing to pass you by. And I did not give one promise that you don't qualify for because it's all by grace. My finished work at Calvary, not your works, not your works. If you got it by righteousness, then it would be by works, by your righteousness. But all you had to do was receive my righteousness. The finished work, the finished work, the finished work. So when you decree now, mm, decreeing is deciding that what he said is done. And I'm decreeing it so that the angels know I'm ready to receive it. I'm decreeing what's been decided. I'm decreeing that I'm going forward because the word of God told me it's my time to go forward. But I can only decree it, oh Lord, help me Jesus, from the revelation of what God has promised through Jesus Christ's finished work at Calvary. Everything was finished when he said it was finished. Every promise was done when he said it was done. Y'all, I don't have to work to do it. I can't work to do it. I have to receive. And I have to receive by faith. And faith cometh by. What does faith come, cometh by? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith didn't come by what I heard. Because now I'm in a new place, in a new realm. And so I've got to hear in this realm in order to operate in this realm. Mm, mm, mm. So I have to get there by faith. I have to get there by faith. Can I have one of my readers read Galatians 2, 20 and 21 again for me? And I'm going to get ready to close. I know you've got a whole bunch more scriptures. I just think that we, we've gotten to this one. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I know, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If I if I keep thinking that I'm gonna get everything by the do's and don'ts and my own righteousness, oh, God. dying was in vain. 
but I receive the finished work of Calvary today in my life. I receive the blessings of the Lord, which make it rich and addeth no sorrow. I receive the healing of the Lord. And I talk to myself, my whole self, that I'm healed. I talk to my body that it receives. I receive the promises of the Lord. I receive the desires that God has already paid for me to have through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And Deacon Adams gave us the word last week. I'm entitled to walk in them, and I'm expecting to walk in them. You know, some of your minds, that word entitlement brought about a haughty. I, I, well, I'm not entitled. Yeah, yeah. No, see, see, I'm not. You, you can't fix what God said. God said through the man of God, entitlement and expectation. That means I'm entitled. I'm not entitled because of what I did. Yeah, I am entitled because of what I did. I received what he did. That entitled me. I received what he did. That entitled me. You walk around like you owe to, I am, I'm entitled to be walking in these blessings. There's some blessings that I should have had by now. There's some blessings that I didn't realize. There are some promises that got, my name on them, floating around here. I'm going to get my stuff and I'm taking my stuff back. There are some desires that I have that God through Jesus paid for me to walk in in this realm. Yeah, you go. I had seven things in my opening. I never got to my opening. I just went right into the word. But one of the things in the seven things is some of the things you you gonna have to leave some folks because them regular Christians they gonna think you lost your mind when you start talking like this. But you have lost your mind and you took on the mind of Christ. Let this same mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You lost your mind. You gave up your mind. You taking on a new mind. That's founded in the word. And that mind walks in the spirit. I'm going to give you one scripture. So you can shout all the way this afternoon. Go to uh, Revelation. You got my scriptures baby. Where is it? Revelation. Uh, is it uh, Revelation? John. One, one ten. Read it please for me. So, so everybody can shout. I was in the spirit. On the Lord's day. Stop right now. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. When he was in the spirit, he had, he heard in the spirit, he saw in the spirit, and he had the right to activate what he heard and saw from the spiritual realm. Oh, Jesus, there's a realm God is opening up. For us to go in in the spirit where you're here in the spirit. That's how your bills are going to get paid off, folks. That's how you're going to buy houses debt free, folks. That's how you're going to walk in here. I heard in this, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. It's not in your mind, it's in your spirit. And as you come in that place in the spirit, catch this. He heard in the spirit. He saw in the spirit. This is what the Lord said. And I gave him the authority to activate in the spirit what he heard and what he saw. All we need to do is get in the spirit with the Lord. Not with our mind. Not with our thinking. Not with what sister girl told us. Not with who said what. Not, I was in the spirit. On the Lord's day. And the Lord revealed to me. And I heard the Lord say. What have you heard the Lord say? Now you're going to get your prophecies out. And you're going to do warfare over your prophecies. From a different angle. Because you come into a different realm. And so I can do warfare now in the spirit. Not from my mind. But from my spirit. 
and I can hear what the, do you think it made sense to that woman to don't pack, don't pack. He didn't say you and your children won't be on the street. I said it to him. He, did, he didn't say they're not going to padlock your house with all your, he, he, all he said to her was don't pack. I love it. He just said don't pack. All he said to me was agree with what I told him. He didn't even tell me what he told. I had to ask him, what did he tell you? How you know he told me something? Because he said for me to agree with what he told you. So, now what, what did he tell you? He said, all he told me was I couldn't pack. So I went and got the box. I keep trying to pack. I've been trying to pack for three weeks. She said, for, for I even sent in the, the request to you, I, I was trying to pack. He kept saying, I told you not to pack. I told you don't pack. I told you not to pack. What did the Lord say to you about your situation? I see, we're going to go in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then when we hear in the spirit, remember what I said? Prophet Wallace gave a word. Apostle Designate Wallace gave a word. Prophet Rowe gave a word. The word kept churning through me. I heard the word. I heard it from both of them. I was sitting right in this chair when they gave it. Both of them. I kept saying, Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what are you saying? By Tuesday, I was getting a revelation on what he was saying. I heard it, but I didn't hear it. When John went in the spirit on the Lord's day, he heard and he saw. When he heard and he saw, it gave him the authority to activate what he heard and what he saw. Every one of those declarations you have, I heard and saw something about them. Your voice has the authority to activate them in your life according to your own faith. According to, did you look up and see what the Exodus 14 said? I'm not going to write it out for you. What did the Lord say to you about moving forward or advancing? What did he say to you about walking in your place of prominence? What did he say to you about precious doors what did he say to you see those were things that i knew he was saying and saying to love ministries so therefore we had the authority to speak them now the angels are coming to hear who believes them and open them for you on my prayer list i have a prayer list of people that i want saved it was so funny I put someone on the list who I don't like. And uh, the Lord told me to put them on the list. And when I first put them on the list, I said, Lord, you know, I don't even like them. He said, but you don't want them to go to hell. No, I don't. I want them to get saved, but I don't like them. By the third week into my decreeing over them, I said, you know what? I really don't even dislike them. He said, I knew you didn't dislike them all along. He said, your mind made you think you didn't like them. But now you're taking authority over your mind. And then it happened the other day. We're sitting around the table and I think Shelby asked me a question about something. And I spoke about someone with a, a tone that was. And I said, well, speak about them in that tone. I don't really dislike them. He said, I know, but your mind has has been programmed so long that you don't like them. He said, but now you're reprogramming your mind. You're telling your mind, you're not going to tell me who I like and don't like. But you wouldn't even have been aware of it until you got to this realm in the spirit. I hope somebody is hearing me. You wouldn't even have been aware. You just thought, well, I like them because they did such and such and such and such. You did stuff too. 
Do you like yourself? I said, Lord, I don't dislike them. You certainly don't. I said, forgive me for speaking in that tone. That tone was not a kind tone. That tone was not a loving tone. That tone, I don't dislike them. But I wouldn't have got there if I hadn't put them on the list. I, is anybody hearing me? My mind will no longer control me. My spirit man is coming up to where it should be. And my mind is going to be ruled by my spirit. In time, you don't run nothing. Because I saw in the Bible. I saw in the Bible. Where God stopped time so the word of the prophet could come to pass. Don't, don't mess with me, time. Don't, 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 don't mess with me. You coming into submission too. Hallelujah. You coming into submission too. Because my hope now, my whole faith now, my decrees now, my security now is in the grace, the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you that everyone under the sound of my voice, whether now, in the future, or when, is hearing what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. To move as the remnant and the dominion and the authority that you called us to move in, in the earth realm. And that we hear what you are saying. And faith rises up in us because we are hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to each one of us. We give you praise for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you're on this call, you're on this line now, you're not born again, you 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 don't know where you'd spend eternity, this whole message about is about the finished work of Calvary. The finished work. You can't receive it by faith. If you don't know who Jesus is and haven't accepted him into your life, I ask you right now, if you are not born again, if you're not sure where you'd spend eternity, would you pray with me right now? Father, I believe that Jesus is the son of almighty God. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe in his miraculous birth. And then he died on the cross for me. I believe he ascended on high. I believe he is seated right now at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Renew in me the right spirit so that I can be who you call me to be in the earth realm. I ask you to come in. Forgive me. And be my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that, you're now born again. We want you to text born again. We want you to text born again to 713-849-5683. We're going to shoot you right out a little booklet that tells you what happened to you. We want you to sign up to all our social media avenues. We'd like to pastor you or cover you and bring you into understanding. We want to teach you so you can grow up in the things of God. So shoot us an email, shoot us a text message. That number will get it all to us so that we can assign one of our leadership to reach out to you. But we will send you that book without any assignment or any qualification. That booklet will come right out to you right now. I want everyone under the sound of my voice to get ready to sow a seed. I want you to sow a seed. You cannot receive a word like this and not sow back into this word. 
you have received, and now it's time for you to sow into this word. We have four or five ways for you to sow. They're coming up. They're in the chat right now. They're coming up on the screen. It's right now. You can Zell to contact. You can Koch app to LMFC 77. You can give by text LMMG to 54244. You can use PayPal at admin at LMFC.org. Those are the ways that we have for you to donate at this time. And I believe when you receive a word of this impact, you should sow into that word. You should sow into your mind. See, because your mind will tell you, I sowed last Sunday and I sowed the Sunday before that. And next Sunday is is the it past this is October, Pastor Appreciation Month. And next Sunday we're gonna have to sow to her. Well, wait a minute. See, all those, all those excuses your mind just gave up, they will keep you out of the realm of the spirit. So because you have received this word today, I want you to sow a seed today into this word manifesting in your life. We thank you for the opportunity of bringing this word to you. I love teaching the word of God. And I love the fact that God is giving us revelation into who he is so that we might grow and become who God has called us to give. Make sure you get your seed in the ground. We'll send this out to you within the hour. May the Lord who is gracious, the Lord who is mighty, watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. In Jesus' name, thanks so much for being with us today. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you next week.